All right, so Rise of Napoleon, we just went over the do now. You guys should have the aim in your notebooks complete with the number, 2.10, and the aim exactly as it's written here, how did Napoleon come to power? So away we go. All right, so here's our first slide. I will give you a second to copy, and then we'll go over it. So the first thing we need to know about Napoleon is that Napoleon is born into the third estate, okay? So he's born prior to the beginning of the French Revolution when the estate system is still intact in France, okay? So Napoleon and his family are third estate people, okay? Now we, you know, so they, they suffer under the, the constraints of the estate system where the third estate pays all the taxes, they have fewer rights and abilities than other people and just suffer, you know, the consequences of inequality in general in French society. So um, luckily, Napoleon actually, on merit, uh, wins a scholarship to a famous military school, and he begins his apprenticeship at age 16. He sh very quickly shows that he has a very sharp military mind, um, and he excels pretty quickly. Uh, he, he's afforded the opportunity to train with the best artillery unit uh, in the French army. But the problem is... Because of the estate system, Napoleon is only allowed to climb so high through the military ranks. Because the highest military ranks are reserved for the first and second estaters, really the second estaters, um, he's kind of, he re hits this glass ceiling, so to speak, because of the estate system that he's not allowed to excel any further. And that's, you know, that's most unfortunate. So let's see what happens here. All right, I'll give you a second. Okay, so in 1789, the French Revolution hits. Okay, no more estate system. So the, this estate system that was holding Napoleon down uh, from kind of climbing through the highest ranks of the military is eradicated, and that glass ceiling is kind of shattered. And the, his famous quote is, uh, I found the crown of France lying on the ground, and I picked it up with a sword. So basically what he's saying here is that this this revolution presents opportunity to him and the people who have the strong will can take advantage of that opportunity and climb to power and that's kind of what he's saying i think um so in 1792 he becomes captain and then general and then eventually he's commander of all french armies in italy so um france even though there's a revolution at home is still kind of on conquest and the French military is in the process of establishing uh, an empire, essentially. So even though there's turbulence at home as far as the king and all that stuff, the French military is out conquering new lands all the time. So like we said earlier, Napoleon showed at a very early age that he's a pretty sharp guy with regard to military strategy and stuff like that. So he wins a ton of battles as commander of the French armies. Um, it's strategy, speed, surprise, and just kind of decision-making. Um, he's loved by the, his troops and the people of France, which is a hard thing to do. Um, but he's generally universally uh, beloved, and he returns to France as a hero. All right, I'll give you a second. Okay, so... Napoleon returns to France after all this conquest and basically learns pretty quickly that politically France is in a state of chaos. OK, um, so essentially Napoleon marches his army into Paris and overthrows what government did exist there and decides we're in charge now. Um, Napoleon sets up a new government called the consulate. And in theory, it should be a republic, meaning there are there should be some democratic elements to this government but in reality it's napoleon who holds absolute power and in 1804 napoleon crowned himself emperor now the interesting thing here is that um 
if we think back to why the French Revolution starts, it's really, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the French Revolution being a reaction to absolutism. So it is the people kind of rejecting the idea of certain people holding all the power. And now we have Napoleon who basically crowns himself emperor and becomes an absolute ruler, which is the same style of government that France was fighting to get rid of when the French Revolution begins. So the answer, the question is really why? Well, the answer is simple. In times of chaos and instability, people will turn to a single all-powerful ruler in order to restore order, okay? We've seen this a lot of times in the past, um, even going as far back as Rome, okay? Uh, the Roman Empire turns to Julius Caesar and, you know, and uh, his grandson um, and several others because they have the ability to restore order to a chaotic environment. And the reign of terror and the French Revolution certainly does qualify as a chaotic environment. So the people are more than happy to give Napoleon the opportunity to um, kind of regain control and restore order in general. Awesome. That's it.